Build a new Utah law aimed at strengthening your right to defend yourself has unintended consequences for victims of crime. Now KSL investigator Daniela Rivera reports some lawmakers who supported that bill might have been relying on inaccurate information. Utah is one of only two states. Based on what he's learned from Utah prosecutors and a KSL investigation, Democrat Representative Brian King says Utah's legislature should reconsider House Bill 227, a new self-defense law that went into effect in May. I think we should take another look at it simply because it was uh, not well thought through to begin with when we considered it last year. The new law shifts the burden of proof for self-defense to prosecutors during a pre-trial justification hearing. If they can't prove that a use of force was not self-defense, the case gets dismissed before it ever goes before a jury, and it's already led to a murder charge being thrown out. I worry that it increases the likelihood of vigilante thinking and vigilante behavior. Critics also say the law incentivizes bogus claims of self-defense and is causing more delays in an already overburdened court system. But House Bill 227 was pitched as a way to save people who act in self-defense from the expense of defending themselves trial. at trial. Currently, individuals who use their firearm in self-defense are subject to prosecution and often a cost. Jury trial. Republican Representative Carrie Ann Lisenby sponsored the bill, and debate on the House floor lasted less than 15 minutes. Have the courts been consulted on this? Yes, they have, and they participated in the drafting of this language as well as the companion resolution HJR 7. We also asked Liz and B about the court's involvement. We worked with the courts on this bill to make sure that it was the right process. When the KSL investigators followed up, a legislative liaison for the courts said it's true that the courts helped draft procedures to accompany the bill and made language suggestions. But the substantive policy issues in House Bill 227 were not the subject of input from the courts, and the courts took no position on the legislation. To make the case for why the bill was needed, Lizenby referenced an incident that lines up with a 2019 shooting in Provo. A man happened upon an apparent domestic violence situation and ended up shooting and killing the alleged aggressor. You know, this man acted in the defense of another person and was had, and had, was involved in a drawn out legal process for over a year. But that man was never charged. A decision prosecutors announced six months after the shooting. And he had to, all that whole time, retain an attorney and go through the expense of an attorney before the case was dismissed. But this law would not have impacted that case. He was never charged. At the time, that case had not reached a conclusion. That was in 2019, was the decision. This I conversation was in 2020. I don't believe that it had. That decision was announced in December 2019, more than a year before this discussion on the House floor. It concerns me because there may be some unintended consequences that are significant. King voted no on the bill, but a majority of his colleagues supported it. And House Bill 227 is now the law. Our credibility as legislators is on the line, and it should be on the line. King says it's important that the debate surrounding proposed legislation is accurate. In a 45-day session when you're talking about literally hundreds of bills that come before us, you have to rely on your colleagues. House Bill 227 is a near copy paste from Florida law, making Utah one of two known states with this specific legal process. Lizenby told us she reviewed data from Florida showing the law is working there. We've asked to see that data multiple times. She has not provided it. Back to you. All right, Daniela, thank you.